do a little here, and I'm going to get a chance to say hello to each one of you individually, and we'll have our pictures taken. And so, never mind the speech, except for one joke I was going to tell, which you probably know anyway. <laughs> but in case you don't know it, it's the story about the little boy that had a litter of puppies he was trying to sell. And there was a Democratic meeting in town, and he went there, and he told him these were Democratic puppies, and the fellow bought one. About a week later, some Republicans had a meeting, and he went over there with his little friend that had been with him all the time, and the unsold puppies. Somebody asked him, he said, no, the Republican puppies. And the little boy friend said to him, you said last week they were Democratic puppies. He says, yeah, but today they got their eyes open. <laughs> Now, that's all the speech you're going to get out, uh, because with the limited time here, the last line of the speech was, I know that some of you may have some questions, and I, uh, I know that at some time or other, many of you said, boy, if I had a chance to ask him, would I? <laughs> well, let's do that and have a dialogue instead of the monologue here that was in my pocket, and then we'll, uh, we'll catch up on the schedule. So uh, somebody must have a question of us that wasn't covered in the briefings. President Dr. Ben Claybert, North Dakota. As a physician, I talk to a lot of people every day, and I have found unanimous, bar none, support for your handling of the Korean uh, plane massacre. People want you to feed the Russians, but keep your foot to the fire. <laughs> As an surgeon, however, we stand as the official orthopedist to the Republican National Committee. I stand ready, however, to check those running shoes. We're ready to have you run. <laughs> well, you'll understand why I don't comment on that last point there. I've explained to some of our other party members now and then in the face of the same question that and they've said, well, I'm going to wait till the last possible moment because if the decision were no, you'd be a lame duck and couldn't do anything. And if the position was yes, you'd be accused of everything you did, that it was political and part of the campaigning and you couldn't get anything done. So uh, I'm just going to let those seven other fellows go out there and wear their spikes down. <laughs> yes. Mr. President, Ralph Noble, I'm a chairman and farmer of Nebraska. And we too agree the way you have the uh, Korean air affair. There's a side effect from that that is very far reaching and most important to agriculture. And that is that you did not give consideration to nullifying the long-term grain agreement. You did not give consideration to an embargo. And you have told the world and the Russians that for the first time in some nine years that uh, we will live up to our contracts. And uh, this is something that you seem to have the wisdom to learn from your predecessors, which is a, a, a talent that not all have. had. And I want to let you know that we appreciate it, the agriculture community appreciates it, and uh, our trading partners appreciate it. Well, Let me just say, and I did explain to a few here at the table, we looked at everything. My first reaction was, where can we drop a bomb? <laughs> but it, at least I didn't, have to, I didn't have to go through what my predecessor did when they invaded Afghanistan and he said he was so surprised now he'd have to change his whole thinking about it. I didn't have to change my thinking a bit. Uh, I knew what they were to begin with, but we did look at these seriously. And we felt that there wasn't any point in just doing something for show that uh, wouldn't affect them a bit, hurt some of our own people, uh, to make a gesture or something. What we're trying to do, and right now the meeting that's going on started yesterday in Montreal. Some 34 countries are there uh, in the uh, International Organization of Aviation. And they're there dealing with amendments to the regulations, what we can do to try and ensure that such a thing as this can't happen again, uh, demanding an international investigation of what took place so there will be no question about it, things of that kind. We did cancel negotiations like cultural agreement and things of that kind, the opening of a, of a consulate. Those things I could understand. But I think that a couple of the things that we're talking about are the best things that we could do. One of them keep on with the arms negotiations because the last thing in the world they want is disarmament. So we're going to withhold their feet to the fire under the table. And uh, that one and the other one is 
take advantage of the fact that finally some people here in Washington have seen them for what they are, and the result has been the passage of our appropriation bill, including the funding for the MX and other weapon systems that we'd asked for. We want, we really truly want disarmament. We want a reduction of weapons to try and at least reduce this great threat and, and particularly when you realize now what kind of people they are. But, so we'll keep at it there. But at the same time, we will keep on building our defenses because the thing is we must have the equality in strength that is a deterrent that will prevent them from going adventuring and starting a war. And now they can have it one of two ways. They can have it through mutual reduction of weapons, or they can have it with us continuing to build. The choice is theirs, but one way or the other, we're going to be equal to them. My question was that the grassroots were out there and they were white knuckling it. Mr. President, I want to thank you for giving this country hope. And not only have you given us hope, you have fulfilled your promise. And we can go back from this meeting today and we can tell the people what you've done and we want four more in 84. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Someone else? Yes. Can we make the last question? You mean we're that out of time already? All right. Mr. President Lois Shepard from Republicans Abroad. As the representative of three million American civilians living outside of this country, I remember well what it was like to live abroad during the current years. And during the briefings this morning, one of the things that was, wasn't touched upon was the lack of American prestige living outside of this country for American citizens. And I want to thank you for having us, allowing us to hold up our heads all over the world and proud of being American. Thank you very much. I have to tell you, I had the pleasure of, of addressing the uh, Paris Republicans in Paris, France, in the 1972 election. <coughs> President Nixon had sent me on a mission while I was still governor for him abroad, and I did this chore on the side. And uh, the president of the Paris Club had introduced me, and I stood up in that 1972 election, and I said, thank you, President McGovern, and I hope that's, <laughs> that's the last time I ever have to say that. <laughs> that. That was his name. Well, I know that that's the last question, and, and uh, we have to go. I do think that we have a, a better relationship with our allies now than we've had in years. Incidentally, among the things that have come out of this plane crash, I can tell you things that have been proposed by critics that we should have done, we've done. We've had a problem, and I was aware of it in 1981 at the Ottawa Economic Summit with our allies there. And since then, and as of last spring, we have an agreement with all of our allies on the restriction of credit to the Soviet Union, subsidized interest rates for buying products and so forth. They have now come along with us. As of last spring also, we have an agreement with regard to the sale of high technology that is shut off anything that can be of help to them militarily. All these things have already been done, we, so there wasn't any more we could do about them. But I just, I'm going to leave with one more little anecdote. We do all get along very well. And thanks to, I know that Margaret Thatcher was responsible, that diplomacy or let's say protocol goes by the board at the summit meetings anywhere. We're all on a first name basis. I discovered that and it was Margaret who said, Helmet. <laughs> but when we had this last one in Williamsburg, 
that wonderful historic place in Virginia where they have restored it to what it was when we were a colony, up to and including the British governor's home. And I had it all set that the first meeting was the dinner meeting the first night. When we all gathered around the table, the heads of state, I was all prepared, and my line was going to be, Margaret, do you realize that if one of your predecessors had been more clever, you would be hosting this gathering? <laughs> uh, so when they all settled, I said, Margaret, do you realize that if one of your predecessors had been more clever, she says, yes, I would have been hosting this gathering. <laughs> Well, I have to go in the other room now, and I'll be waiting for you in there.